In this video, I want to point you to a balance sheet warning sign that all is not well. A company may be making money in the profit and loss account, but losing control of a vital area of the balance sheet called working capital and heading into what could be a cash flow crisis. So, with no more ado, a snapshot of a company. Now, what I've done here is to present you, first of all, with the profit and loss account for two years, a really shortened profit and loss account. We've just got the sales numbers for this year and last year. Nice trend there, sales up a little bit on last year. Cost of sales, deducted to give gross profit. Now, if you just looked at that snapshot of a profit and loss account, you'd think, well, this is looking all right. Um, two key numbers are heading in the right direction. There's one of them, the sales figure, and there's the other one, a nice climb in the gross profit figure. So, all looking well. Not so fast. Some businesses pay quite a price for their expansion. Now, I'm making up these numbers to make a point, but let's now turn to the balance sheet, an often overlooked document. Here it is, just a snapshot. That's not the full balance sheet. All right, I've done another video on balance sheet basics. This is just the middle section, the working capital section. So I'm focusing just on the short-term assets and liabilities of this business. Stock, receivables and cash, and short-term creditors. If you add up those three assets, deduct short-term creditors, you get something called net current assets, aka working capital. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick, a way to analyse working capital, but you don't necessarily need it to be able to see that things are going a little bit wrong. Why do I say that? Well, stock levels have jumped from 20 million last year to 50 this year. Receivables are up from 30 to 80. Why is that bad news? Money that's sitting in stock, in the warehouse in other words, or is held by our customers, is expensive, it's inefficient, it's a cash flow drain. All right, you don't want money tied up in the warehouse, you don't want money sitting with your customers ideally. On the flip side of that coin, cash is obviously cash, short-term creditors can be a useful source of short-term funding. In other words, if you owe other people money, they, like it or not, are kind of paying to run your business in the meantime. Now, the picture here is not a good one. Working capital has rocketed from 40 to 120 as sales have increased and gross profit has increased. But the point is, the change is disproportionate. What I want to do is show you a quick way to analyse that, to actually get to the, the sort of nuts and bolts of where things are going wrong. Now, you can do it by basically a short, sharp exercise. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly called the working capital cycle, where you basically convert these numbers for stock receivables and creditors versus sales and cost of sales into a number of days. You're going to be asking three questions. How long do we sit on stock as a business? How long does it take us to collect our cash from customers? And how long on average do we spend waiting to pay our suppliers? Put those three together, you've got your working capital cycle. Lots of numbers coming up, you'll probably never have to do this in practice, just a snapshot, so don't worry if the numbers go fairly quickly. Here it is. All right, now, did warn you, lots of numbers, but it's really the conclusion that's more important here. And it's something to watch out for and something to ask questions about. You see it happening in the business you're looking at. So, the day counts, I've called them. This is simply converting closing stock into a number of days, receivables into a number of days, and creditors into a number of days by comparing them to the relevant figure from the profit and loss account. So, for example, Stock days, as I've called it. Now, I won't go through every calculation here because you're pretty bored. It's this year and last year, but the principle is the same in all these calculations. What I'm doing is taking, now, look what I've done here, taking the stock figure from the balance sheet. There it is, the closing stock figure. Okay, this isn't the only way you can do this, but it's my way. Comparing it to the figure at the top, the cost of sales, and expressing that as a number of days. Why? Because 50 times 365 over 150 is 122 days. What does that tell me? It tells me that on average, it takes 122 days to turn stock around. So the gap between stock arriving, on average, it's a snapshot, and stock leaving our company is 122 days. Quite a long time, several months. Last year, it was only 52. We were turning around stock much more quickly. Same calculation, last year's numbers. Now, receivables, let's look at that. So how long is it taking us to collect cash from customers on average? Well, back here, Receivables were 80, all right, just here. Let's compare that to sales and express it as a number of days. So 80 times 365 over 200 would give us what? There it is, 
146 days. So it's taking us a pretty long time to collect cash from customers. On top of the fact, it's taking us a long time to ship the stock out in the first place. All right, you get the idea. Last year, it was only taking us 61 days. How did I do last year's calculation? For anyone who is interested, all right, you can always email me at the end of this video to find out more. I simply compared last year the 30 million over there to the sales figure and expressed it as a number of days. All right, finally, how long on average is it taking us to pay our suppliers? Well, that's looking at creditors times 365 over cost of sales. Creditor days, it's known as. And again, picking numbers off of here. There's your creditors figure down there. All right, here's the relevant cost of sales number at the top. And as a number of days, what would that look like? And the answer is 49 this year, 104 last year. Now, in cash flow terms, this is all bad news. Why do I say that? Because it's taking us much longer to turn stock around. It's taking us much longer to collect cash from customers. And worse than that, we've actually changed the way it looks like we pay our suppliers. That's all cash flow negative. So the expansion I pointed to at the start of this video is coming at quite a price in working capital terms. Enough of a price to make me nervous. Because let's, let's put this all together and what do we get? Here it is, stock days, debtor days, and creditor days. So what I've done is I've added the stock and the receivable days together, deducted creditor days to give a working capital cycle of 219 days this year versus only nine last year. And you do not want a long working capital cycle. You don't want to see a business where that is stretching and stretching and stretching. Why not? If I were to put a sort of timeline down here, just to illustrate my point, there's, there's sort of T0 or now. What this is telling you, taking this year's numbers, is the gap between uh, stock coming in and stock leaving the business, stock in and stock out, is 122 days. It's one way to look at it. Now, once stock leaves the premises, it's taking us another 146 days for the cash to come in from customers. So that would be like plus 146. And meantime, at day 49, which is down here somewhere, we've had cash going out to pay our suppliers. So the gap between cash leaving and cash coming back in again is 219 days on average. It's a snapshot. I mean, I just use closing numbers. They may not be fully representative of the year. I get all that. But it's a snapshot. That's bad. That's a long working capital cycle. And it's much, much, much longer than last year. So in a nutshell, the message from this video is simple. Watch out for a working capital crisis. Stock rising faster than sales, cost of sales. Receivables out of control. Creditors not matching a rising cost of sales. Okay, the wrong working capital cycle, in other words, for the business of this size and type, and a big difference versus peers, or a big change versus peers. Now that was fairly quick, all right? Red flags are important. Any questions, feel free to email me at the usual address.